Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about how I made this little hyena commission. So it's a smaller doll that I've made. I usually make bigger dolls, but um, the customer wanted a smaller doll. She also has a main wolf that I made a little while ago. So it's roughly the same size, um, which I'd really like to do more dolls this size. Um, a bit more manageable, I think. And uh, yeah, but a bit more fiddly. But um, yeah, so it's got a, 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 a ball and socket armature uh, all the way through, same size, one eighth scale ball and socket armature. I've sculpted the head and the feet out of Sculpey Original and also used faux fur and a little bit of different fabric paints to create the colour and everything. So if you want to know how I made him, then keep watching. Alrighty, so I just want to talk about what is available on my Patreon in this round of my art dolls. So I go through the whole like little vlog process um, on each step that I'm doing with these art dolls. So you can see I'm, I talk about how I did the armature, the felting, talking about how I did the body and attaching the skin of the faux fur, updates on how I do the trimming, how I added all of the little details like colors and spots and patterns. And you can check it all out on my Patreon. Link is down in the description and there's plenty of other things like free printables and heaps of other tutorials. So check that out below. Alrighty, getting into the video. So I, if you haven't already seen my previous videos on sculpting the head for this doll, check it out. It's on my YouTube. I'll try and remember to link it, but I never do. Uh, but uh, here's a little overview of what uh, the head looks like once it's been sculpted. I use Sculpey Original to sculpt this head. I usually use that uh, polymer clay to sculpt all of my pieces. Uh, unless I am casting them in resin, then I use monster clay. So apologies for the cut off frame of painting the head, but I'm using a acrylic water-based paint by the brand Chromacryl and it's a pretty cheapy paint, uh, but I really like the the way the consistency of it and just the way it's um, it, it paints as well. So I usually prime all my pieces before I start painting. I usually use a canvas primer, um, but you can use like a plastic primer or anything like that or a car primer, but I prefer to use a canvas primer because it's usually a water base and it's really cheap and accessible. Once it's dry, I can go ahead and paint all of the pieces that uh, aren't going to be covered by faux fur. So it's usually the nose, the mouth, the ears sometimes and around the eyes, as well as like the little paw pads that you can see here. These are also sculpted out of Sculpey Original and I sculpted each one of these feet because um, I didn't want to use resin feet because it's not quite um, reflect the hyena feet. So I sculpted all of them individually and then also attached the armature that you can see um, to the top of the foot. I use a one scale, one eighth scale plastic ball and so socket armature for this one, but more of the, that sort of detail can be found in um, all my vlogs and tutorials on my Patreon. But I put together the armature using these little pliers, which is like a little tool that can pop the sockets on and off. It's super easy to use and super fast to make an armature, which is really great as opposed to making a wire armature where you have a bit of constraints and um, a little bit more work to do when you're using wire armatures but there's a time and place for using um, the two different armatures. So basically what I'm doing now is a little process that I do where I felt some polyfill over the armature and then I can create like a nice little form that the skin can sit over the top of. So I'm not going to, into too much detail um, in these videos but it's a needle felting process um, that you can see very repetitive and time consuming but I think the outcome is uh, really great and it works really well for um, dolls that have a particular shape and muscle tone so um, yeah I highly recommend giving it a go. It is a little bit uh, kind of uh, therapeutic actually poking the uh, needle into um, the felt over and over again it's quite nice and you can sort of do it in the background while you're watching something or doing something else but um, yeah I seem to be doing more dolls with this particular method than my older method um, but yeah I think the outcome is worth it so basically what I do for the skin is cut out a larger piece of a rough shaped 
um, of the the fabric that you're going to be putting over the top of the felted body and just sort of pinning it together a really rough pin together of actually covering the body and then going ahead and trimming off all of those excess pieces to um, get the, the the fur to conform to the shape that you have made um, it's a little I found it's a little bit more wasteful but then again it's not because you still have to draw out patterns with my older method anyway which also leaves um, a bit a bit of um, excess fur so I guess it's kind of the same same um, with it with both methods so basically as I'm trimming I'm pinning the open ends together just to make sure I'm getting the fur in the right shape and for it to conform properly to the body and I think this is great when you're doing muscle tones it kind of conforms to that muscle tone that you've done un underneath with that felting so um, just just making sure that you're actually sewing the fabric on tight so it does conform to those muscles so it's always important to get a really good uh, yarn a really strong good quality yarn because if you get uh, cheaper yarn it's sort of made cheaply and sort of breaks easily when you put any sort of tension on it so I usually use um, yarn from the brand Gudeman or a upholstery yarn which is quite thick but you can pull it really hard and um, it gets that fabric to conform to the shapes underneath. And the legs that I'm doing, so basically what I did was sew the main body of the skin on and then went around and sewed the, the legs on from the bottom up and sewn around the muscle tone um, and that's basically how I achieved getting the skin on. And the stitch that I'm using is a ladder stitch and the, the yarn that I use, I only really use white or black yarn um, because I find with the ladder stitch it sort of blends in a bit better because uh, it's your, the ladder stitch sort of folds the fabric over on itself and blends in a little bit better so you don't really need to use uh, yarn in all sorts of different colours because you're not really going to see it. But once it's all sewn up I can start gluing all of the ends together. If there's a little bit of space where you think it needs some more stuffing uh, just put it in and sort of conform it to the shape that you're wanting but if it's a bit of an excess then maybe consider just sewing it up again and trimming some areas off so it conforms better to that shape and the fabric glue that i'm using is a tacky fabric glue it's nothing too special uh, it works great i've talked about it a million times <laughs> um, but once that's done i can give it an overall trim and then add some faux fur to the head and also the feet there's a little bit of cleanup after the faux fur has been added just to get that shape again and all of the little details that have been a little bit covered by the, the faux fur. And then the most important bit is adding all the little details and shading that needs to be added to the face or the body. So I have a couple of things that I use, um, either fabric paints or acrylic paints that are sort of watered down so it's not too clumpy. Um, and it can be sort of painted on a little bit better. So the black paint that I'm using is by the brand Jacquard and it is a textile paint and works really well. I've used it heaps of times um, and it, you can water it down and make it a bit thinner. You can use it in your airbrush, um, but I have a video on the paints I use on my YouTube in my materials 101 playlist. So check that out if you're interested in more description about those paints. But uh, always have reference images up too so you know uh, where to shade things and where to add certain patterns and colours to your dolls, if you're, especially if you're making realistic animals. You always want to have a lot of reference photos up so you know what you're doing. Um, so I'm just adding, I'm kind of free flowing here and adding the different patterns as I see. I've looked at the different types of hyenas, different, um, not the same hyena, just so I can get an overall uh, understanding of the patterning on some hyenas so I wanted the muzzle to be a little bit darker um, that's just how I wanted it to be uh, and also adding some details to the ears and I'll be adding some spots with the same paint uh, as well you just using my brush you can use something a little bit sterner like maybe a felt tip brush um, that works quite well uh, or a bigger brush it just really depends have a go and see what you like using i was using the stained set from um stat uh, what were they they were, they were textures that were called stained uh, but i can't get them in australia anymore which is really weird uh, i thought they were really great for fabric painting like this they never 
left any heavy residue or anything that you can get from paints um but yeah i can't get them in australia anymore and i'm not paying <laughs> 50 bucks to get them from the states um but yeah i think using using a fabric paint works equally as well especially when you water it down and use a fabric uh, like a felt tip brush or pen to fill in the gaps I'm adding a bit more of a darker black tone to the ridge or the back end of the spine area of the hyena just to um, have it more blended and uh, just have a bit more patterning on it make it a bit, a bit more realistic then I'm also adding a little bit of different colors like yellows and browns to the coat uh, just really, really light coat, nothing too overwhelming, and sort of blending it in um, to 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 conform to the to the shape. Uh, the yellow was a bit harsh, I thought, with this, so I added a little little bit of brown to mute it a bit, and I think the brown really brought out um, the the final characteristics of the hyena. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I really like the way the body shape turned out too with adding um, the skin over the top of the felting so this one is a commission so it is sold I'm thinking of opening one more commission slot but I'll hand it over to my patrons first and if not uh, we'll hand it over to public and see if anyone is interested in a commission slot but there's more dolls in my shop at creaturesandnet.com if you want to check that out payment plans are also welcome just shoot me a message you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook TikTok at creatures of net and uh, yeah my shop creaturesandnet.com Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. I really appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.